know, I almost, almost went back to bed this morning. It was snowing, sleeting, icy outside, windy. I am sure glad that I ignored that thought, got out here and went on this run because it was just beautiful. I also get to enjoy today's run in the Puma Forever Run Nitro. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Stay tuned. So I appreciate you being here today. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. I'll be doing more shoe and gear reviews, trail runs, races, sharing my experiences, and then the occasional word of wisdom. Also, give the video a thumbs up and drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think of Puma's shoes recently. I think they're pretty fabulous. And that's what we're gonna be talking about today, the Puma Forever Run Nitro. But we're gonna try and answer one question. Is this a stability shoe for neutral runners? Or maybe it's a neutral shoe for stability runners. Alrighty, we're gonna be talking about the build. We're gonna be talking about the comfort. We're gonna be talking about the performance and the value of the shoe. But first, voiceover Chad, why don't you tell us about the specs of the Puma Forever Run Nitro? According to Puma's website, the Forever Run Nitro dons a new era of support and guidance for all runners, providing the softness of a full nitro midsole without compromising stability. It features a newly developed nitro midsole with two different densities, a softer core and a firmer rim, and an asymmetrical heel counter to hold the foot in place through every stride. As for the specs and features of the shoe, Puma claims that this is best for overpronators, but in my experience works flawlessly for neutral runners too. It features an engineered mesh with power tape reinforced support and durability, asymmetrical heel counter, Puma Grip outsole with a flare design for a wider footprint, nitrile midsole with dual density foam, run guide technology which keeps the foot aligned and centered, 36 millimeter heel stack and 26 millimeter forefoot for a 10 millimeter drop, 272 grams or 9.6 ounces, and a US MSRP of $150. Back over to you, Chad. Thanks, voiceover Chad. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> Get me every time. So I've had the Puma Forever Run shoes out for a good handful of runs. And just looking at my watch, I am just about to hit officially 50 miles in the shoe. So let's start and talk about the build. And I'll try and keep this short and sweet, but overall build quality, I'm very impressed. I think Puma did a phenomenal job. I'm trying to remember, I think I need to go straight. Yeah, let's go straight. I had to remember where I was going. So yeah, build quality is great. Uh, Puma did a good job picking, I think materials that are gonna be durable, uh, lightweight, comfortable, and they put the shoe together really well. I mean, okay, I've only done 50 miles in the shoe, but I really think this shoe's gonna last a long time. You know, in the uh, Puma Velocity Nitro 2, I put over 600 miles in that shoe, and I would expect to get comparable duration, longevity out of this shoe as well. I feel like the Nitro midsole is gonna last a very long time, retain its responsiveness, it's cushioning. I think the upper is gonna last a really long time as well. So, build quality, I'm putting that at, oh, probably a nine out of 10. I debated to do a 10 out of 10 because it's just that good and that well thought out. So, great job, Puma. On to the comfort of the shoe. All in all, comfort is Wonderful. Let's start with the upper. First, you're getting some really nice padding around the uh, ankle and the heel. That's super comfortable. I've never felt it uh, dig into my ankle or my Achilles heel at all. Along the heel of the shoe, as you can see in the B-roll, there's a like a rubberized plastic hold around your heel. Just helps hold your heel in place. Helps secure it a little bit better. I've heard some people complain 
that their heel kind of slips out of the shoe a little bit. Um, I don't really notice that, so it's not a problem for me. The upper of this shoe has also got a really good lockdown feel across the top of your foot. I feel like that's in part due to the fully gusseted tongue. Thank you, Puma, for including a gusseted tongue. And then you've got that power tape, I think is what they call it. It's just that extra reinforcement, and it's found both on the outside and the inside of the shoe. So it really provides a good lockdown, snug fit that's not intrusive or restrictive. There's been absolutely no pinching or hot spots at all in this shoe. The laces are also soft, ever so slightly stretchy, but comfortable. As far as the fit, it's probably on the narrow side. It's certainly not a wide shoe, but for my foot, that's perfect. You do get a little bit of room in the toes, but around the midfoot and the heel, it's nice and secure. Last thing I wanna mention about the comfort is the midsole. I really like the full nitro foam midsole that they put in the shoe. As mentioned by voiceover Chad, in the stats of the shoe, you get a dual layer, dual density uh, nitro foam. Kind of get this outside layer that's a little more dense, helps guide the foot forward. And then in the middle, and you can see it from the bottom of the shoe, it's that light blue colored uh, foam. And that is slightly softer, a little more bouncy. So it's really nice to feel that underfoot as well. That said, um, I do wish when it came to comfort that there was a little more of that light blue, softer, bouncier nitro foam in the forefoot. But if you are a heel striker at all, you're gonna find this shoe very comfortable. That 36, 36, 36 millimeter heel is very nice. Good morning. So yeah, lots of underfoot foam, lots of cushioning, but it's responsive when you need it to be too. Comfort score, Ooh, I'll put it at a nine out of 10 as well. Only reason why it's not a 10 out of 10, as I mentioned, was wish there was just a little more softer cushioning in the forefoot. These birds are going crazy. Check out the lake. It sure is pretty. Oh, just gorgeous out here. So what about the performance of the shoe? Uh, I'm just gonna come out and say it. I'm gonna give it a nine out of 10. That's pretty good for performance. So look, the outsole is great. Really good grip, even in conditions like this today with mixed ice, snow, concrete, and I need to go around this apparently. Midsole performance, I'm overall very, very pleased with it. I feel like you could pick up the pace if you want to, but also make this your easy day shoe or your long run shoe. It's quite universal. Performance of the upper is very nice. As I mentioned before, good lockdown, secure fit, but not restrictive or problematic as far as pinching or hot spots. The upper is also really, really breathable. In fact, it's among the most breathable shoe uh, that I own. I can just feel the air going through the upper, hitting my feet. So if you need a breathable shoe, this is a great one. You also find that the, it's not only the upper material that's breathable, but the tongue is also very thin and extremely breathable, which I was actually concerned about when I first saw the shoe. Wondered if laces would uh, like pinch down or rub into the top of my foot, but that hasn't really been a problem at all. So I do appreciate that. And speaking of the tongue, I mentioned it was gusseted. It is padded up here at the top. So where you tie your laces, you're gonna get some good padding up here, but extremely breathable up through here and up through the tongue. Really nice. You got some uh, extra little loops there to help hold the laces and the tongue in place. Even though it's gusseted, 
probably don't need it, but yeah, it's just well thought out. I love the design and the overall uh, thought that they put into this shoe. So now let's answer that question that I'd asked earlier. Is this a stability shoe for neutral runners? Is it a neutral shoe for stability runners? So Puma touts this shoe as a stability shoe, best for over pronators. I don't need a stability shoe, but I don't feel like this shoe quite fits into the stability category either. Now, two of my brothers are also runners and they need or could use benefit from a stability shoe or a shoe that offers a little bit of stability. And I recommended this shoe to them. So if you overpronate, I do think this shoe could do quite well for you. But if you're a neutral runner looking for a high stack, somewhat lightweight, I mean 272 grams, that's not too bad. This is also a great shoe for you. I do not feel that the stability components of this shoe are intrusive or get in the way at all. In fact, if Puma didn't even advertise this as a stability shoe, I don't think anyone would know the wiser. So I would classify it more as a neutral shoe that can be used by many stability runners, but also does quite well for all neutral runners out there. Part of the reason why I gave the shoe a nine out of 10 in performance instead of 10 out of 10 is because I wish that it had a little more of a rocker shape to help get me up onto my toes just a little more help in that transition with each foot strike. Um, again, not problematic at all, but my one, I guess, wish for this shoe. Other than that, I dare say it's we're just about perfect. Always got to come back for the camera. Okay, last item, the value. So the Puma Forever Run US MSRP is $150. That price, in my opinion, is maybe a little steep. It's competitive and considering all the thought, technology, tooling, innovation that they put into this shoe, I could see why they're going to charge $150. It's probably worth that price, but I would really like to see it down into that 130, 135, certainly no more than 140 price range. So value, I'm going to give that a seven out of 10, but there's a really good chance that you can find the shoe on sale. In fact, as of the recording of this video, you can get 30% off from his website. $150, a little hard to justify, but it's probably still worth it, especially if this is your main daily trainer. The shoe's gonna last a long time. You're gonna get its value for sure. I'm very confident that you're gonna get that value even if you spend 150 on the shoe because the shoe's gonna perform well and last a long time. I'm fully confident of that. All right, looks like we made it down to the lake which means we only have a few more miles left in this 20 mile long run. So do I recommend the shoe? Yes, absolutely. I do recommend the shoe. I think for most runners, this will be a really fun shoe. Shoe that's gonna last all those miles. Very universal, a fun shoe. So yes, I recommend it, whether you're a stability runner or a neutral runner. But one thing to keep in mind is another shoe that I've really, really liked. And that is the Puma Velocity Nitro 2. Not quite as much stack, but at $120, that's a great shoe. So consider that as well. I should let you know that Puma did send me this shoe for the purpose of review, but all thoughts, opinions are truly my own. Alrighty. Really appreciate you all being here with me. Please subscribe if you're not already subscribed to the channel. Give the video a thumbs up and drop a comment down below what your thoughts are on 
the Puma shoe lineup for this year. Oh my gosh, it is so beautiful out here. I don't think you can see the mountains on the camera very well, but they are out there. You got Long's Peak 14er. It's uh, Colorado's northernmost 14er out there with the clouds coming up behind it. Oh, just beautiful. Okay, I've got just a few miles left. Let's go finish up this run. Appreciate you being here. We'll leave this video off as we always do. Remember to be consistent, express gratitude, and enjoy every mile as I am today. I will see you guys on the next video. Bye now. I don't believe in endorsing products. Mmm. Sis raspberry. Delicious. Silly. Mmm. But that is a really good flavor. Wow. I've been getting over a cold recently. Can you hear it in my voice? Beautiful run though. No regrets. The only runs I regret are the ones I don't do.